Let me cut that fan for you. We up, we up, we up, we up. I'm up. Right now, it's like 5.40 fucking 3 in the morning. My phone on 6%. So like... Duval County, baby. Yeah, I feel, I feel great. Where am I lying? I can swear I ain't want this shit, it's just colder and deader I'ma tell you, don't worry, I'm fine Bitches ain't shit, they will go get her She wanna get close, but I won't let her Like saw me, I'm working on mine When I say I'll be great, no, I mean it Kill with two or three, some skill in between it Plus addiction, to feel undefeated Okay, maybe a little conceited Like maybe I need me some time okay, I turn all of my L's to a bag or two I know diamonds need pressure to shine I'm doing way more than just trying I hop me this bit with a full heart I say what I need with a full heart I need bucks so she can't have my full heart Ay, Can't see no light in the pitch dark Still hot, did it with a full heart Been that way since day one Tell what, okay Tell what, I always got proof so Don't get white, bitch, you gotta face some Can't talk, cause I really ain't better See me wearing my life like a sweater Can't see no light in the pitch dark Still hot, did it with a full heart Been that way since day one Tell what, okay So hot, can't you bit with a full heart What's going on, Duval County? We're here with you for another episode. We got number 19. Uh, remember, this is Forecast Jacksonville. This platform is to put on for people in Jacksonville. Put the spotlight on them. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. On today's episode, I got Tell of Ronan in the building. You already know what the fuck going on, man. Big end is near shit, man. Teen shit, bro. We in the building, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is the fourth or fifth end is near member. We we slowly knocking out the whole collective, man. Um, my dog just got back in town. Literally ain't even been to the crib yet. My dog came straight to the podcast coming wow. down from Miami. Uh, what you was doing down there, brother? <sighs> My little dog birthday, man. So we popped out. Gotta, oh shit, yeah. 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 Nah, you Gucci, My you dog Gucci. birthday, man. We popped out. We had some fun, man. We, but we still got there and did some work. We did a lot of recording out there, just making music, man. That's what we do. That's what we do. Hell yeah, yeah had some fun, bro. Had a little fun with the hoes out there. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> had a little fun with the hoes out there, but we did our. But we still did our thing. That we had. We had a time. No, we made some music. Yes sir. yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. I hate the uh I hate the critique, but you're gonna have to gonna have to project your voice a little tight shit a little into bit. the mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You good, yeah. I know you're tired. You need some water or something? Actually, if you have a bottle of water, yeah, I got you. I'll get you one of these fancy waters. Smack. Um while I'm gone, you know what I'm saying? Shit, tell the people about yourself, tell them who you are, and I'll be right back for the uh with the water. Yes, sir. So for those who don't know, my name, full name, Taylor Ronan. Been in Jacksonville damn near my whole life. I traveled out, been out, left, came back. Any nigga who from Jacksonville know that once you born here, you find a way and fuck around and come back to this shit one way or another. But um, yeah, man, making music for six years now. So I was 16. I'm going to be 22 next week. Yeah. Keep going that shit strong. Hey, that man came through clutch with the agua. That's that. That's that quality too, boy. That's that. That's that real get right. That real quality H two O. Yes, sir. That's a uh, fresh spring water from uh, I want to say Arkansas. The source of this, yeah, Arkansas, Arkansas. Gar- <laughs> that's how I remember to spell that shit. Garland County. Yeah, and it's in the glass, so you ain't got no you ain't got no microplastics. Protect right. your sperm count, you know what I mean? How you say that? I'll chew with the mountains. I'll chew the, I, what, nigga? <sighs> I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't even know. And I I buy that by the case. Ooh, it cheetah mountains. That's what we gonna call that bit. Ooh, it cheetah. We gonna, that shit be going fast. Let's see. I'm finna. <laughs> I'm finna see how to pronounce this motherfucker. Oh, 
U A C H I T A Mountains. That bit take extra clean, bro. Pronounce. All right, here we go. Here we go. Washita Mountains. Washita Mountains. Washita. Rashida. Hey, shout yeah. out to Rashida from uh, middle school. You know what I'm saying? Had a little oh, crush God. on baby, but I was too shy. <laughs> but yeah, I know uh, Ronan sat here and introduced himself to y'all. So there, it's a possibility, you know, I could ask a question that he's technically already answered for y'all. Um, but I had to get my dog hydrated. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, my, my dog been going, man. He drove all the way here from Miami. Hydration uh, is key. It's crucial, bro. We live in fucking Florida, bro. I feel like the whole fucking world is on fire, especially this fucking place, bro. We just baking in a fucking sauna out here. <laughs> Shit's ridiculous. Uh, yeah. I'm uh, twist that mic down towards you a little more. You you should just be able to. Hold on, I'm gonna get you right. Twist it a bit, man. Huh? Uh, yeah. Turn the vibe up. There we go. Oh, yeah, already. Quality. Yeah, already that bit got right. All right, all right. Enough with the technical difficulties and the uh, refreshments, things that should have been covered prior to starting. But again, man, we thank y'all for being here with the journey, man. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's number 19. Um, So let's just get started, man. You know, this is a podcast for Jacksonville. We know you live here, but are you from here? I am from Jacksonville, actually. Uh, I spent good majority of my life here. I lived in a lot of other places, but majority of my life has been spent in Jacksonville. Where were you born at? Uh, I was actually born in Memorial Hospital, funnily enough. Oh, you said in Orlando? No, nah, Memorial. Oh, that's what I thought you said. And then I thought you said Orlando. I'm like, damn, they there? So yeah. m- Memorial here? Yes, yeah, sir. Oh, yeah. That shit called uh, HCA now, I think. Somebody bought them out. That shit, shit, yeah. That shit been turned since there. I don't had to take my mom there and that shit, they done did better because it used to be my homie used to work there. He was a, a, a RN there, and he was oh, like, "Type shit." It's some problems in here you don't want to know about. Don't bring your mom here. All right, but one day we ain't had no choice, and I was, I was, I was shocked. She had to stay there for a few days, and the doctors was nothing but phenomenal for real. Hell yeah, my grandma had to go there when she had COVID. Yeah, type shit. That's about. I think that's a little, a little after they sold. So that was that was a good good time for her to go because I remember, bro, before like. Whether it's the homies or my mom, like a motherfucker be like, please don't take me to Memorial. Please, please run me to St. Vincent's. Uh, they'll get me right there, right around the corner. Anywhere else. Yeah, pretty much, bro. But shit, if you're in an emergency, any hospital better than none for real. To be honest. Yeah. So you was born in uh the Memorial Hospital. And then what took you out of Jacksonville? When did you leave? So my mom at the time uh, was doing her own thing. She just recently ended up um getting a house out in Palm Coast. So I had ended up living out in Palm Coast for a little second. And then um I ended up moving out to California after that cuz that's when we went to go stay with my pops and shit. Um I was in California. I was in like West Hollywood for like I would say from like yeah, it was like first till about like Right before I started fourth grade, then family shit happened and ended up uh, going all the way. I think where I ended up in Ohio. I ended up in Ohio. And after Ohio, I ended up um, no, I I ended up in New York, then Ohio, then I ended up back in Jacksonville. What part of New York you was in? I was in Long Island. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. I stayed out there with my um. My auntie for a minute. I went to this little like Christian school where not it was like a Catholic school. I don't even fucking. I was there for like maybe like almost a year. I wasn't even there for like a full year. Oh damn, yeah. man! So Long Island, West Hollywood, Jacksonville, and then Ohio. Where uh, where you was at in Ohio? I was in Cleveland. Oh okay, you, yeah. yeah, you was in the main city. Yeah, I was in Cleveland, and um, I did like like the um. I want to say like the like the beginning to like the last part of um nah from like that was like fifth grade. I definitely got in there. I was in like fifth grade. Yeah, I was like fifth grade when I got to um Ohio. I was in fifth grade and then I ended up um before I finished fifth grade, I ended up coming to 
Jacksonville again. Uh, I got a situation. I ended up in foster care in Ohio, and I was with a temporary family, and I'm going to school there. And then my uh, grandmother had found me in the foster care system, and it just took, like, forever for, like, her to get the paperwork and all that shit done for her to, like, get me back over here, so... And that's wild. We just got some. We just got some uh, behind the scenes for real from you. Uh, that's not. That was that's shit. That's yeah. deep, bro. I ain't, <laughs> I ain't know because like we we done hung out, but like it was more on some like social shit. So we ain't really like never had no no deeper conversations, bro. <sighs> shit. That's just that's interesting to uh, to learn. Because from what I know, with your family is your people got a restaurant. Yeah, my mom has a restaurant right now. Actually, Chopping Coppin Spring Park at Emerson Road, man. If y'all want the best Jamaican food. In town, you want dirt pork roti, dal pork roti, beef pati, or rice on pea. You see the accent that come on. So, when y'all have the time, go check that out. All right, 3144 Spring Park Road. All right, right by Wackos. Y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about. If y'all from Jacksonville, y'all know what I'm talking about. That's the, you should have just led with that. Right. <laughs> That's the easiest landmark, Wackos. Type shit. Yeah, I ain't never been to Wackos. When I did DoorDash one time, I dropped the food off in there, but I ain't never went to the strip in there, bro, because I ain't, I done heard like, the music choice trash, and then, like, the females ain't. Listen, I came up on mascaras, bro. <laughs> I came up on mascaras, bro. I know some of y'all might not even know about mascaras because they closed a few years ago. R.I.P. mascaras, man. Mascaras, but then other than that, sensations. The lowest I'll take it is passions. Like, passions cool, but you can't blow gas in there, bro. That's, you can't even smoke a cigarette in there, bro. Like, that shit is smoke-free. It's weird to be in a strip club, no smoke. Type shit. I ain't never been to Passions, but I have worked at Wacko's. I worked at Wacko's for a little bit under the table. Um, when I used to, uh, when my mom first started up the restaurant and shit, like for some extra cash, I used to go and like break down their boxes and shit and like stock like their alcohol and shit on the low because um, they had a good relationship with my mom. So they felt, so they would just pay me under the table to do that shit. Um, and then you see all kinds of shit. Like you said, bitches is not it over there. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. You have, yeah, yeah, nah. <laughs> bitches is not it over there. And like, I don't know, shit busting the food is horrible. Them wings are not that great. I ain't gonna lie. People, they, they say them wings are kind of a little overrated. I think they say they got the, uh, they were rated like the best lunchtime burger or something. I was like, uh-uh, bruh. Uh-uh, bruh. You'll catch me. To be honest, how many people are there during lunch, though? But that's when I dropped off DoorDash, but there was, I didn't. I didn't even get checked. Like, no, I just walked through the metal detector and like nobody was there. No bartender. Like, I was like, I don't even know if I'm supposed to be here. Motherfucker come out the back. Oh, hey, hey, is that DoorDash? Like, y'all motherfuckers could have got clapped in here. That shit. <laughs> like, real easy. But shout out them boys. They, they, they done. I, I will say shout out to them because uh, I learned a lot of lessons over there. I ain't gonna lie. It's just. Talks I had with this one the one little chef back there. They had a security nigga, this like a Bosnian ass nigga. Mm-hmm. Like it's, we had we had some crazy conversations. I learned I learned some shit. So I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. I still gotta give them their props. Yeah. Shout out to the Bosnians, man. Uh-huh. I fuck with the Bosnians, bro. We got a lot of Bosnians in uh in Jacksonville for real. I mean we got a lot of all cultures, but I know from middle school and then high school and then even just like different jobs I've had, like uh, lots of Bosnian people that I've run into. And I personally, like before middle school, I never heard of Bosnia. I didn't even know what that was. Cause to me, just looking at them, they just white. Like, Oh, you from Europe somewhere. But like now I know like Bosnians and even Germans, like you could, you could tell like they, I don't know. It's crazy how like all countries, you can learn something from everybody, bro. I feel like lots of niggas, especially in Jacksonville, just be, Closed minded because lots of niggas in Jacksonville ain't really left Jacksonville. So to be honest, but you can really learn something from everybody. Everybody got their own little point of views and shit they got going on, bro. So yeah, yeah, it's uh the Filipinos. That's why I got Filipino family, bro. And like that, that Filipino culture real heavy out here, bro. It's like oh, yeah. lumpia, you'll catch lumpia. Uh, you ever been to Trap House Chicken? I ain't never been to Trap House Chicken. Yeah, it's on Merrill. So, on like, Merrill? they sell lumpia, but their lumpia is long and skinny, and they call them Swisher Sweets. 
because it's the it's the trap. No, I know what you're talking about. Cat, I have been there, bro. I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about, bro. Um, it's like it's almost ducked off, kind of like in a plaza, right? Yeah, behind Taco Bell. Yes, bro. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about, bro. My dog took me there one time because at first I was like, "What the fuck kind of name is this? Trap House Chicken, bro?" I was THC. Like, right? <laughs> yes, bro. Yes, yes. I know. Yes, bro. I know exactly what you're talking about, bro. He got some some wings from there. Some like I yep. think they got like some like lemon pepper wings or some shit, bro. Yep. Um, he got some wings from there, bro. The wings actually was not that bad. I ain't gonna lie. The wings nah, was they, actually they, pretty good. They, they good for real. Yeah. yeah. I fought with them. Yeah. I wouldn't say they're the best wings in the city because for me, what makes something the best is the quality of the meat. And because I eat a lot of like grass fed and pasture raised like animals and stuff, <sighs> like that chicken got to be, it got to have that, I don't know, like it, it tastes, it tastes special. So I would say like V pizza, Hell yeah. V pizza got the best wings in town, bro. You fuck with V pizza like that? So, number one, the San Marco location. Number two, you got to eat it there. If you don't eat it there, bro, you're not having the same pizza. So, and I understand for a lot of people, especially with pizza, like, that's not fair. Because, like, pizza's a to-go thing. Like, people always take out. And, like, if you go to New York, you don't have to say that. Like, if you take your pizza to go, you, you straight. But, like, if you drive that bitch home... It ain't gonna hit the same, but the wings they hit exactly the same. You bring them home, bro. I'm gonna have to try. I tried their pizza. They pizza not bad. I fuck. I fuck with their pizza, but uh, I ain't never had their wings at V's though. I I, I I wanna try that. I ain't never had their V. I ain't never had V's wings. So you like spicy? Uh, not necessarily. Not. Funnily enough, I am. I eat a lot of Jamaican food because that's just like my family. But I really don't like spicy food like that. Okay, so then you need to get the V signature wings. It's uh just like olive oil, garlic, uh I think like, you know, just a bunch of different herbs, but then they on top they put caramelized red onions. Big dog. Listen, bro, I, you probably never ate uh onions with your wings. No. It's a crazy addition, bro. It's I ain't a, never done that. No. It's a crazy addition, bro. But um shit, shit, so we talking about food, so you Jamaican, you eat a lot of Jamaican food cuz it's your family. You are Jamaican, right? Yeah, my family's drinking. I was born here, but yeah. Right, right, right. But it's in your bloodline. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So outside of that, what's your like favorite cuisine? Outside of that? Yeah. Um, I love seafood. Seafood? Seafood Ooh. is my shit. Tell me more. What kind? Seafood is my shit, bro. Um, I love garlic, shrimp, and crab. That's my shit right there. Blue love... crab or crab legs? Crab legs. Yes, sir. Crab legs is it. Blue crab, all right, but crab legs is crab it's legs too is much it. work for a little result. Right. right. I fought with um, mussels, shrimp, bro, crab. Uh, what else, bro? Salmon, uh, tilapia. Depending on who cooks the tilapia, that depends on who makes it. But um, what else, bro? Pretty much any fish, bro. Snapper, all that. I don't, don't, don't even matter to me, bro. You I fuck with uh, cod? I just, uh Kind of not bad. Well, not like fat. I can't do no, like no fast food color, bro. I'm not gonna ever eat like like no McDonald's. Like like fuck no. I know. I uh-uh, can't do no. shit like that. I'm talking about the cod that like if you go to a restaurant, it's like 38, 45. Okay, like, yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. that top notch type shit, yeah. type shit. So when I like I said, pasture raised, grass fed, I also go wild caught when it comes to my fish, and I try to do never frozen. Like, I want that fresh fish, because once you freeze it, bro, it loses. That's the- how I be feeling, bro. That's how I be feeling, bro. Low-key, when I be going to, like, get, like, fresh food, bro, I be picking certain places where I go to to get fresh food, because lots of these shits is, like, it's it's not it. It's not it. And that shit bad for you, bro. Yeah, for sure. For sure, bro. And you can taste the difference when you make that shit, bro. That shit be... Yeah. You can taste it. Yeah, and how it's cooked, bro. Like, the way people uh, cook things... Cause you'll go some places like you know a lot of people say Applebee's like they should just all be microwaved. I don't want no microwave food. I don't give a fuck how much it costs, bro. You should not no- be microwaving any seafood. That's like, never big dog. So like uh, that should never be an option. Yeah, you I fuck with lie. crawfish. I go lie, I can't fuck with crawfish, bro. <sighs> Why I not? can't do it, bro. That shit just tastes ass, bro. It's just like <laughs> I don't like the texture. It's just not. I don't even, uh, bro. I just can't get behind it, bro. Yeah, I, I, I used to feel like that, and then, I don't know, one time they brought them over for Christmas, so we had, like, I think 10 pounds of crawfish, so I was like, fuck it, they free, you know what I'm saying, I never really spent my money on it, so I'm sitting here, I'm like, okay, I'm just biting the meat and throwing it away, my cousin like, nah, bro, you gotta suck the head, and I looked inside, and I'm like, damn, that shit look gross, and I was like, but, let's just try it, while we're here, let's just try it, if I like it, I like it, if I don't, I don't, um, 
You eat raw oysters? I can do oysters too. Raw? Uh, I can't even fuck with them bitches. If you have uh, if you have a good sauce with it, it's good. Oh yeah, no, you gotta have that fresh uh fresh what is the uh fresh horseradish and fresh made cocktail sauce. The cocktail That's sauce and a lemon. I'm not the biggest horseradish fan, but the cocktail sauce and a lemon, that shit do smack. And a bro. cracker. That shit do smack. I tried it, bro. I just I can't get down with it, bro. But I'll fuck with them roasted any kind of way. Uh I've, and fried for sure. I'll fuck that with shit. that fried shit yeah. with some tartar sauce. I ain't know tartar sauce was just mayonnaise and relish, bro. That shit blew my mind, bro, because I fuck with mayonnaise and relish. But shit, what we got? We got um probably about four or five minutes. Um, so we done we done talked about you living in New York, Cali, Ohio, Florida. But you've also been on tour going to a bunch of different cities. What all cities have you performed in outside of Jacksonville? Outside of Jax, I've um, done L.A., uh, Chicago, Atlanta, My- uh, Miami, Orlando. Uh, I think that's it. So, or um, what's that? What's that shit called, bro? It's like Fort Worth, Lake Worth, whatever the fuck it's called. Where is that? Like what state? That's that's Florida. It's like almost like close by West Palm type shit. Okay, I'm not familiar, but that's six. Okay, so that that's a lot more than like you said. A lot of people in Jacksonville they don't really like get outside of the city, in general, but also to perform. So sure. how do you feel like that's helped you, um, getting outside of the city and performing? It's just uh, lots of ways, really. To be honest, just the biggest the, the biggest ways is a networking. That's just first and foremost. Just you gotta travel to meet people, bro. People is just there's just other people. That's just not where you're at that are doing things that can help you and you got to go to where they're at and you never going to get there unless you travel, whether you, whether you do it on purpose or by accident. So lots of the time I'll be going out to these places. I go there for one reason, end up meeting somebody for an entirely random reason. And then that leads to something even better. Yeah. So another big thing is just like self-motivation and yourself to just go out there and watch yourself just do what you've always like envisioned and wanted to do and like to get good feedback on that shit and like to it's almost uh i watched this one guy on um instagram bro it low-key sound corny but like it's some real shit nigga said um to never um if in every case you never like you any whenever you like doubt yourself always stack undeniable proof of who you say you are. So that way you always know that like, you never have to worry about, are you as good as how you think you are? Cause you have undeniable like proof of it going out and like performing in other cities and watching the feedback and watching people just like have a genuine good time and like really like appreciate you being out there. I've had niggas like lots of that tour stuff I was doing, I was opening up for people and like lots of them were like fans from other like cities and shows that I've been to from before and Hey, just to come see me, like not even to come see the main person that was there. So like that shit's like crazy. That shit makes you like it's like I could we keep going, we do this shit. You feel me? It's almost like that. Yeah. What's been your favorite uh set? Like which city do you feel like uh not just that you think was the best, but which one did you enjoy the most? Um this one I enjoyed the most. It's almost like a tie. Uh, LA or LA, LA was just the biggest and was just like, that was just like, LA was just the biggest and that one was just like surreal, bro. That was like crazy. That was crazy. So many, so much, so many people and to like have them all as turned as they was was crazy. But I ain't gonna lie, Atlanta, because it was just because the venue was a little bit smaller, it was like the show was, I don't know, explain it was almost like closer. I got more closer with the people. It's more intimate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More it, that's 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 why you say yeah, intimate. Like that shit was like like but that shit was crazy. Like I felt like that was I felt like that people like it was Jacksonville. Like <laughs> we was we was turned like that shit was in Jacksonville. Like them niggas went crazy, bro. I'm not gonna lie. And that was the first Atlanta was the first place I crowd Low key, I'm gonna have to get to Atlanta because Atlanta was the first place that like I ever crowd surfed. So that was hard. Hell yeah. I give yeah, yeah, I, that's I, tough. I, I'll give them that. Yeah. And I think another another benefit, um, to performing outside of your city is 
people aren't turning up or, you know, showing support because they know you or because you're from the city. You're going to people who have no idea who you are for the most part. Maybe, you know what I'm saying? It's a few people that possibly know who you are, but you get that honest feedback for real, bro. Like, like, uh, it's not sugarcoated. Cause I know for me, bro, if, if somebody perform in Jacksonville, bro, and they from Jacksonville, as long as it at least can make me bob my head, I'm gonna show some love. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna support it just because it, it, it's in the city. But you're not, you're not going to get me like jumping unless your shit, your shit hitting for real. But uh, we're going to take a little uh, quick break. We'll be right back. And I want to get more into your your uh, performance style for real. Whenever we get back, Duval County, baby. What's going on, Duval? Thank y'all for staying tuned. Uh, like I said, I want to get back into the performance. So, tell me about your journey as a performing artist because, like, you're you have a very like electric energy about you. Anytime I've seen you perform, I think the first time I seen you perform was at. Uh, I think it was the archives when uh, Marco did his uh, performance there. Didn't you? Uh, which, what are you talking about when Marco threw his own? At the clothing wife? store. At the clothing store. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's the first yeah. time I see you perform, bro. You went fucking crazy. Oh, I forgot about that shit. Man. And to we turn up it. in a clothing store, bro, like there was limited space. There wasn't a stage, so you were on the same level. Didn't you get up on somebody's shoulders or some shit? The bouncer's shoulders? Oh, was that Marco? Nah, I think that no, was, Marco. was Marco. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm tweaking, I'm that tweaking. Was <laughs> that was Marco for sure. But yeah, so uh, yeah. just tell me about, you know what I'm saying, your growth. Like, when you first performed, did you always have that energy, or did you have to develop it? Definitely had to develop it. I mean, I've been, I even in like, I've always done like shit on stage, even when like I was in school and shit, so... Like, I've been on stages before, but, like, even when, like, I did my first performance, I guess you could say, um, that was, like, it's, it's always just, like, uh, you always just feel nervous until you get up there. You feel nervous until you get up there, you're up there, and it's it's worse to go back than it is to go forward. So, just go forward. Uh, after, like, my first time, my first couple of times, it wasn't, it wasn't the greatest. There was definitely lots of shit that I, I don't. I didn't do now, but, um, like as far as like a journey, a journey to it, it's like, it came, it came naturally. It's like, you know, you just do something more, the more you ride the bike, the better you get at it. You know, um, essentially I didn't have to, as far as like, it always came natural to talk to people and interact with people for me. Um, just little certain things I throw in and like, I would guess you could say like techniques or little things that I purposely do to help um, as far as like getting crowd engagement involved. Um, that was definitely a little couple things I learned over time. But as far as just like always interact, I've always been someone to interact with like whoever I'm up there with because I feel like you just got to be a person at the end of the day because that's how you relate to people. You got to be human. So did did you ever like review your video footage from it and kind of critique yourself from there or just from your point of view of being on stage? So like yes and no. I I would watch it, but not in order to like critique myself. I watch it just because like I was just like, well, I just want to see what the fuck the videos the video these guys I'd be like that shit raw. <laughs> yeah. Which one can I post raw? it? Right. Oh god, can I post that bit? <laughs> can I post that bit? And then like certain shit I watch and I'd be like, damn, I low key should have like done this here right that right. would have made more sense to do now that i'm looking back at it right but like i never really like went back and purposely looked back at it right. it's usually just like I'll, I'll notice it as i'm doing it right you know it was unintentional critique right like you just naturally by looking at yourself but the 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 interest in looking at the video was like is the bit fire right is this bit fire is this right I, I really got a voice t real quick let me see let me let me actually look back like what do you, what they said and then i'd be like damn i look he should have done like account down here i should have interacted or some shit here i should have like i should have i don't know got more you just noticed it you just noticed random shit or like you feel me certain shit where it's all like maybe i should like take a pause a breath here so that way i can really have breath and energy at this part of what i'm trying to say a little shit like that right what well, um who all have you opened for baby tron autumn rob banks thousand band funny um that that is actually yeah I think that's I think that's oh um what's that your name Zaman 
was Ant-Man 2. Okay. And um, that was here? That was um, down in, that was in Fort Worth. Okay, okay. Now, because I knew you were supposed to uh, do a show here. Did that show end up getting canceled? Like, he didn't come? Yeah, that was Ant-Man. I don't know what the fuck he was <laughs> Hey, listen, it's in the name, bro. Oh, God. Niggas, niggas just do, niggas do what the fuck they want. <laughs> that, hey, that's that's part of being a musician, bro. Like, like shit. shit. It's uh, a lot. I mean, everybody ain't like that, but a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? They, it just comes with the lifestyle. Mostly rappers, though. I say more, being in rap, like, I know people be late. and That'd be the worst, bro. I remember back in the day, like, you go to the club, and, like, they supposed to perform at, like, one. Like, let's say Webby or Boosie. And one thirty come around, and they're not there yet. And it's like, bro, we know y'all got to close at 2, bro. So, like, now we're getting a short performance. I paid 100 to skip the line and get in here. And then you get a 10-minute performance. Oh, shit. I ain't going to lie. I generally be late to, like, everything, bro. This is pretty spot on. <laughs> I, I wasn't going to say it, but I definitely had to wait for you for an hour at the uh, at the geeking video shoot. This is it was true. worth it, though. <laughs> this is this is true. I'm generally late to, like, everything. But I was late to, like, things in my personal life before I was even late to, like. Right. It's just I, I'm like that, too. <laughs> I've always just been late. <laughs> I'm like that too, bro. The problem with me is I'll tell myself, all right, the latest you can leave the crib is 645. And when 645 come, I'll be like, it's okay if I leave five minutes after I say it. But it's, it was the absolute latest I should leave if I want to be on time. Right. What about like the out-of-town shows that you traveled for? Were you late to those or um, more on point for that? One of them I was actually pretty late for. Um, I'm generally actually like pretty good about the out-of-town ones. Um, but... There was one in Miami I was definitely late for um, when I did uh, when I was doing it for Autumn. I I was late. I was late as hell on that. They, they had everyone waiting. <laughs> I ain't never heard of uh, Autumn. Is Autumn like a uh, like a big underground rapper? Autumn, I I I say so. Yeah, I say so. Autumn is definitely he definitely up there right now. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm out. I'm out of tune when it comes to like the underground for real. And a lot of y'all in the end is near y'all are totally in tune with the underground. It's like, I never shit. heard of draft day when Ben's was like, bro, I got a video with draft day. I'm like, what the fuck is that, bro? And he's like, bro, he's with Yachty. I'm like, oh, okay. All right. Motherfucker. Motherfucker. Definitely somebody. And then what was the other dude? Uh, Xavier justice. I had never heard of bro. Neither. I have no clue who Xavier justice. Is. Yeah. I'm, that's like Ben's is a fan personally of him, but he, he, he got some motion. Are you talking about Z- not Xavier Wolf? Nah, Xavier Wolf's like the king of the underground. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So you, knew, but you know who's all right. So you know who's Xavier. Yeah, Wolf is. I got uh, K, I told this on the Reed, the Reed show, Circle Boy Reed. I got kicked out of the Squadron Four show, um, for Xavier Wolf about two songs in when Xavier Wolf came out, because I want to say he was smoking gas on stage, so like motherfuckers started smoking in the crowd, but. It was not fucking with that. They had like 15 signs throughout the building. No smoking, no smoking, no smoking. And the security guard, bro, that motherfucker was like 4'10", 4'11", swole as shit. And he walked up to me, he taps me, and he was like, uh, you got to go. And I'm like, okay. Like, I understood what I did. I, I'll take I'll take it. And then he was like, you got to give me that. And I was like, what? He was like, yeah, if, if you don't give me that, it's going to be a problem. I was like, all right, bro, I got you. And I dropped it on the ground and just walked away. And I'm like, bro, if you want to have a problem, big dog, like, you might be swole or whatever, yeah, bro. But nah, like, nigga was tweaking, bro. Yeah, bro. Like, I don't know, bro. Like, that's why I was happy when they started letting us smoke out back and shit. Like, it was open. You could roll up, whatever, bro. RIP 1904, bro. Yeah, they be, like they be picking and they be picking and choosing in that bit, bro. Because I there's been many times where I've went in that bit and I've smoked. Like on stage performing at that bit, bro. And then other times where like they won't let you. It really just depends on what they got going on, bro. Like I know they be picking and choosing at that bit, but R.I.P. nineteen oh four. It's, it's sad to see, bro. We had I had those many good times there. I ain't gonna lie. That was that was a good piece of Jack Swill and that was gone. I ain't gonna lie. Were you um are you grateful you got to perform at the last show at nineteen oh four? Of course. Just cause nineteen oh four was like when you was talking earlier about like learning and like going through a journey with the shows, that was like that was a pivotal spot right there. Lots of lots of I guess trial and error happened there and like going to that same place multiple times. It's almost like a 
like like a like like a like a training gym or some shit. You just like it's like come you're comfortable. Yeah, makes sense. Like, yeah, that's like a home field for you. Type shit. Yeah. Where else have you performed in Jacksonville? Um, Jack Rabbits. Um, that's like the smallest venue. Uh, that bit that bit real intimate. You talk about intimate. You could really because the stage still kind of tall for real for the for the space that it's in. I feel like I seen a uh, Absol there. That shit. That shit was turned. I'll fuck with that. I'll fuck with that. And I think Jameson, the R and B, it's a white R and B singer, bro. Like if you just heard his music, you wouldn't even know that motherfucker snap. I know who Absol is. Absol be snapping. Oh yeah, no nah. Absol. I I was on a Black Hippie movement back when Kendrick was still just dropping like mixtapes. Before he was uh before his debut album, man, I was on I was on Kendrick heavy, bro. Shit, now that we switching uh switching to the, oh before we leave, I had one question about like the shows and stuff. You ever had any wild interactions with uh fans? Wild interactions with fans? I mean, I had a couple. I mean, uh, most. I mean, one of the one of the one of the most craziest things for me. I had um. A girl asked me for my autograph. That was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. I I didn't expect that. Well, I mean, eventually, but like I don't know. You just never happen when that when that shit happens. You just never ready. Like you expect that shit to happen eventually, but then that shit happens, and you're like, oh fuck. Yeah, that was wild. What what she had you at a little? What she had you autograph? So when she had came up with um this picture, and she wanted, um, she had bought a merch, like a merch shirt or something that they was selling out there, um, and then she wanted me to sign it, and she wanted, uh, she wanted me to sign that bit, and add my name to it, because she had already got, I think it was, it was Autumn, yeah, she had already got Autumn to sign it, and she wanted me to sign the shit too, so. Nothing like, like, I feel like that's a unique landmark in your career, but nothing like crazy. Right. Like no, no, like bitch flashing you up or woman flashing you or anything flashing like that. Flashing me before, I mean, like some crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> some, so I feel like you have, bro. You don't, you don't performed in some major cities, bro. I feel like something had to, something had to happen, bro. Trying to dig in your brain. <laughs> I mean, as far as like some crazy shit, I mean, there was this. um one time where this uh one I had I when I had crowd surfed in um Atlanta. I was crowd surfing in Atlanta, bruh. And this one girl had like like this one girl had like grabbed onto my belt type shit. Like she had grabbed onto my belt and was like pulling my like yanking my shit. And I like, at first I'm thinking it's like these niggas trying to like grab me to like hold me up. I'm trying to figure out like you feel me, like what the yeah. fuck? Or somebody trying to like and like do some crazy shit like you feel me yeah. I was like some shit like that bro. cause you vulnerable bro you laying yeah. on your back and people carrying you <laughs> type shit I had most shit out my fucking pocket but I had my phone cause I remember I like recorded like the crowd so I remember I still had my phone yeah. type shit um was like, that's what at first I thought nigga was like trying to do or some shit bro some crazy shit bro but um I look over bro and it's this um it's this girl bro it's just a little Hispanic girl bro um just yeah, this little Hispanic girl just yanking down on my shit, bruh. And I got I gotta like pull her hand off type shit. Cause like these niggas is like dragging me. She's yanking my shit, bruh. She not letting go. Yeah. <laughs> and that shit was crazy, bruh. That shit was crazy, bruh. I dare almost had to kick her, bruh. Cause like it was not <laughs> like I'm trying to tell you, bruh, these niggas is dragging me one way and she's just like not letting she's not letting go like she's about to like come with me on top of these niggas bro like no bro like <laughs> that boy said I almost kicked her he was about to pull a kevin gates on uh -huh. hey, like, you know what i'm saying you can't be touching me in my private areas like, <laughs> <laughs> bro that shit was just that that was that was a little that was wild bro that was i ain't gonna lie that was that was that was a wild time that was in atlanta atl jacob atl jacob <laughs> for atl atl lit I went out there with uh, you know who Taz Taylor is? Yeah. Um, bro, from here and uh, before he started getting like big, big placements, and before he started like, he had internet money as like a collective, but it wasn't like a label yet. Uh, he had did like a tour around the country, and he would have like producer retreats. I capped. I just realized it wasn't all of me. It was Baby Tron. <laughs> I just thought about that. It's shit, okay. Bro. I was thinking about it the whole time. That's the autograph or the crowd surf? The 
Crowds for sure. Okay, okay. That was definitely Baby Tron. Crowds so Shout out to Baby Tron, man. Shout out to Baby Tron, bro. Them niggas was lit. I ain't gonna lie. Them niggas was lit as fuck. Especially Atlanta, bro. Shout out to Atlanta, bro. Them niggas was lit. The niggas was lit. All that shit. That shit was lit, too. I ain't even gonna lie to you. Just have that situation even happen was lit. That whole situation was lit. I'm trying to get the gang in Texas. In Texas? Yeah. Texas would be lit. I've never been to, I've been to Texas, but never for like... On no music shit, bro. What part of Texas you been to? I've been to Austin. That's it. When did you go? Like after it started popping off? This was like that's my phone. I don't even fucking Because like during COVID is when Austin started taking off as a city for real. They've always been like a progressive city, but it's the spot now. Like Austin the comedy, bro, it's the comedy capital of the country right now. Type shit. No, this had to be like. I was born in Texas, actually. This was like earlier this year. Yeah, this was earlier this year, like January. Oh, so yeah, that's lit. Yeah, 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 yeah no. Nah. January. Oh yeah. What you what you went out there for? So um, I have family out there. I went to go meet out there. Actually, uh, I have an uncle out there. You do anything, anything interesting out there, or just family time? Just some family shit. Nothing, nothing, nothing too crazy. <laughs> nothing too crazy. You had some barbecue while you was out there. Um, some some Texas barbecue. I have, I had a little, I had some ribs out there, but it was I was from some bonos, bro. I ain't even had no like actual like authentic. Oh yeah, nah. Next time you go, if you go to Austin or Dallas, go to Terry Blacks. Terry Blacks. Terry Blacks. That's the. That's the spot out there, bro. Okay. I fought with that Terry Blacks, bro. I think we had that shit twice while we was out there. Oh, me and my girl went out there. I, I made this out there. It was a bar called Upstairs Circus, and you choose, like, a craft to do. So you could, like, my girl made a char, uh, charcuterie board, and then I, like, these came separate, and then I painted it, and then I had them, like, print this logo out for me. But you could make, like, a wallet, a photo frame, and they got drinks and shit and appetizers and type shit. some date shit. Nothing, nothing too turnt. Type shit. Yeah, you know, but shit. Let's get back into the uh, you as an artist. What is the tale of Ronan? Where does that come from? Um, it's actually not. Is like I feel like lots of niggas be thinking the name is so like, I not even like profound, but like niggas think it's like some extra deep ass shit. It was really so. I when I first started or when I first like about to post some shit. I guess you say start like making shit rapping. Um. I had a different name that I was going by when I was writing shit. Like, it was a whole different name, and, like, it was nothing to do with, like, Samurai or something like that. Um, and I was just trying to figure out. It was me and my dog, Marcus. Shout out, produced by Marcus, one of the best beat makers in Jacksonville, Florida, right now. Y'all go check him out. Um, Prob Marcus on the ground. Um, we were just spitballing names, and he just said Ronan. And I, I was like, I like that. That sounds fire. I watch a lot of anime. That sounds cool. I yeah. fuck with that. So I went to go put Ronin in when I went to go make like my SoundCloud and all the DSPs and shit. And then I realized when you when you when I type that shit in, there's like a billion fucking Ronins out there. So I end up having to put the tail up to keep the name Ronin. And here we are. Yeah. You got I seen on the um what's the song we played? I, I hate when I do that, bro. I didn't name the song, but I'll have it uh I'll have the Text on the on the video that'll say the name of the song. What was it Full Heart? Yeah, I seen on the cover you had a forty seven. Is that affiliated with the the movie, the Ronin forty seven? Uh, yeah, actually, it it actually is affiliated with the movie. Um, I saw the movie and I saw the movie was just hard, and I like um, I feel like that I had to envelop the whole persona. It's just like Ronin, just because like hey, I've always just been a nerd into like anime and Japanese culture and shit, bro. Like as like a kid, even till now. So like, it was always kind of just like a thing. I even know a little bit of Japanese actually. I talk, I, I, I like do a little self talk off of like not even just watching anime. Like I used to real deal like look words up. I used to use an app called um, Duolingo. Shout out yeah. Duolingo. <laughs> yeah, say, say, say something real in Japanese. Niggas know. Uh, what that shit? Why no my why you done this? Genki this guy. Hey, you really said some oh, shit. What that mean? So I really just said, "What's up? How are you? My name is Jalen." Pretty much. Oh wow. But 
Hey, that. But that's all I know, though. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, bro. No, that's straight, though, bro. That's really all you need. Oh, like, God. until they respond back to you, and you like, and like a couple words. I know a couple see. words. I can count a little bit, but that's like pretty much it, bro. I used to. I was teaching myself that shit for a little bit, bro. I really fell off with that shit. I want to get back on it, though. Yeah. So we got the uh, Ronan. You said you're into anime. When did you? If y'all haven't seen the geeking video, make sure y'all go check that out. When did you uh, get a sword? Because when y'all <laughs> y'all boys pulled out the swords at the video shoot, I was like, oh, we lit. So I've had a sword for. I've had a sword for. Since I want to say, my third, yeah, third video ever because all my ideas that i had for those who don't know i direct and like come up with me and most of like like the storyboarding and stuff i get help with the people who also shoot with me too as well but like for the most part i usually come with like the main ideas and stuff i even help with costume design and stuff too i did a lot of that for geeking as well mm-hmm. uh, um and like i wanted to really tell a story um, about it and one of the things I wanted to like signify me being a main character I needed like a piece I guess you, a prop I call it a prop um, I needed like a piece so that way every time you see it you understand that like that's Ronan it's like a calling card so um, I end up getting a sword at the third video and then I just I always have a sword for every video and I got multiple swords like in lots of different states actually I got swords for like when I go to different places you know to be fire if uh, you got like a custom mic in the long run, like a wireless mic that you take to shows and it's motherfucking a sword. Oh, God. It ain't got to be long, right. but like a sword handle type shit. Yeah. That shit would be tough. That shit would be tough. The first thing that came to my mind was you like performing to a sword, like using it as a mic in a music video. I've tried to bring my sword onto stage on multiple shows. They're not letting us slide. Yeah, nah, bro. You're going to have to book your own private venue to be Hell able to yeah. do that. Which, hey. We'll get that probably like maybe Ben show. I got close for time, bro. I almost talked one of them into it, bro. But we ain't, we ain't strike yet. You got to find a realistic uh, like rubber sword so you can show them like, look, bro, like just hit that bitch across your neck. Like, look, bro, it ain't, it ain't doing nothing, bro. But it looked real. I don't know, bro. But I have, that's that's pretty much where the sword came from. I actually end up, um, did a little bit of training with that shit too, funnily enough. A good training with that shit too. At like a dojo or like So um I actually um went out into my backyard and G shit was like watching like training videos and watching like um training swordsmanship videos and mock battles and shit and like teaching my stan- myself like stances, techniques and like combinations and formations of like slices and shit. Literally. Bunch of self taught shit, bunch of just me being a fucking anime nerd and wanting to like just <laughs> embrace this shit. Fuck it. Uh, would you ever want to get like professional training with it? Uh, hell yeah. I ain't gonna lie. I definitely would. I definitely would do that shit, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Cause this shit, it just teaches you like lots of like discipline and a lot of things. Not even just for like to be cool, but just like life lessons. Yeah. Yeah. Be able to defend yourself in a, in a different manner. Defend, but just like, Patience, like, you know. Yeah, and no, just yeah. The patient, game. Patience and mental game to just, like, get up and do something consistently and to, like, want to get better at it and to, like, perfect it, you know, and to, like, take pride in something. Yeah. So, um, anime. I don't know much about anime, but you said you said you're heavy into it. So what would yeah. you recommend to people who are unfamiliar with anime? You know what I'm saying? Maybe, like, a comfort intro. Comfort intro. Yeah. I mean, I'd say the classics are the comfort intros, bro. Just go like Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, or like I wouldn't say One Piece. One Piece is a lot. You can do One Piece too. Lots of niggas like One Piece. I personally don't really fuck with One Piece like that, but lots of niggas do fuck with One Piece. But like the classic ones are like the basic because they're they're like they start off easy to understand for the most part. Um, they start off pretty easy to understand and like. They're also like easy to get emotionally invested, so you care more about what's going on. So you're you're willing to look through like some of these animes, like like they start to get complicated, but because you care about what's going on in the people, you like are willing to put the time in to learn it. Type shit. Yeah. 
my cousin told me uh, I should start. I don't know what it's called, but he said um, it has a lot of like hip hop, like background music and stuff like that. So it feel like more familiar, but it has a good storyline. So shit like Samurai Champloo does that. Samurai Champloo is really good for that. Damn, I think that I think that kind of that's probably what he's talking about. Yeah, shout out, really shout good. out, Nuja Bees. Shout yeah, out, no. R.I.P. Nuja Bees, bro. Yeah, that shit cool, man. I mean, I used to watch Dragon Ball Z back in the day. Ooh, speaking of that, dub or sub when it comes to anime? I am subbed. Sub? I'm subbed. I can't. Bro, the lots of the American, they're just annoying. Like, they just, like, I don't know. I look at the characters, and then, like, I hear the American voice, and the shit just doesn't, like, I don't know. That shit just annoys me because, like, it just it doesn't match. Like, you don't you don't look like you sound like that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how that, like, that's just how it feels. Like, you just don't look like you sound like that. And, like, lots of, or, like, they be sounding like, 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 or, like, they be trying too hard. Like, they be trying too hard to make it, like, understandable. Yeah. yeah. I never, uh, back in the day, I used to hate captions in general. And then I started watching this show called Money Heist on Netflix. And it's in, like, uh, Spanish. I've seen part of that shit. Big dog. The dub is so fucking bad, bro, that I just, I was like, fuck it. I'm going to get used to subtitles. And now, really, if I'm really interested in the show, I just watch it with subtitles. Bro, you see Narcos? Narcos? Nah, I, I haven't. I haven't. That's one I done missed out on. You need to go watch that shit, girl. Yeah, you gotta no, watch good. That. You heard they coming with a, a Griselda series now. A Griselda series? Yeah, they finna do Griselda. Okay. <laughs> that shit going to be crazy. I know, I know they're going to put some Griselda music in there, bro. Throw some Benny the Butcher in there. That shit gonna be hard. No, nah, I ain't never seen I'm that. See it. I'm waiting to see it. You said what? I'm waiting to see the Griselda. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. That shit. I like uh, Snowfall is one of my favorite shows that came out in like the past ten years type shit. Bro, Snowfall. I watched way back. Wait, that shit started when I was in like high school. That shit started when I was in high school. And yeah, back, you're 22, yeah. Yeah, and back when I we did we no, I think that shit popped up. Um, no, nah, we did have cable. We had we had fucking direct TV, bro. We had direct TV, hell yeah. Um, and I remember like tuning in. I think it was like every Wednesday or Tuesday. It been on FX, right? Yeah, yeah. I remember tuning on like every Tuesday or Wednesday or some shit like that, bro, to watch the first couple episodes. That shit fire. But like once I stopped, like. Using we stopped using cable after like a while, bro. Niggas just switched over like Netflix and Hulu and yeah. shit like that, bro. So like, I stopped keeping up with that bit, bro. But oh, like, you gotta jump back. I on wish it, I bro. wanna like. No, that shit go crazy, bro. Yeah. The first couple episodes I did saw them shits was hard as fuck. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, that bitch, that bitch was hard. I fought, I fought with my dog J- Jerome, bro. Jerome, I fought bro with the, his uncle. Yeah, with the Jericho. The uncle with Jericho. <laughs> for Uncle Jerome, it's this one episode where like uh he pull up and like he beat up like two three dudes, just him. It's like some crazy shit going on, and it was. Bro, like, I think the last episode I saw is when Cuff fucked around and shot. Um, who he shot? Like his homie. He shot like Hulk. Park? Yes, bro. By asking yeah, yeah, some yeah. shit like. Oh that, yeah, bro. that. Listen, you ain't seen nothing, bro. That's Frank, what I was saying. Get cold. Or is that? That's after. Yeah, no, that's after he got like the deal with bro and like the little mansion, bro. Right, and he came out. That's after that, right? Oh yeah, you talking yeah, about yeah. with the the plug? The yeah. um was the coke plug Javi? Right. Yeah, Javi, and then uh, he turned out he was really just the arms uh, plug. He had all the guns, type shit. And then he meet the the real person who the real plug. We ain't gonna give it away too much, but uh, we're gonna be right back for the last yeah. segment of the four case. Duval County, baby. What's going on, Duval? Thank y'all for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and follow all of the forecast uh, pages. Make sure y'all tap in with Ronan. Uh, I'm going to put it at the bottom. It'll be in all the descriptions, but I'm going to try for it. I believe it's T-V-L-E-R-O-N-I-N underscore. Pretty close. Pretty close. So there's no underscore, and the E is a three. But that was it, though. You said a three? Yeah. What did I say, a V? You said E. All right, all right. Shit, I was close. But like I said, it'll be it'll be right here. It'll be in the YouTube description. I don't know why I pointed at the floor. Uh, damn, I ain't gonna lie. My little vape pen got me a little blitzed. I was over here hitting that bitch heavy the last round. Um, shit, shit. All right, so what's something that you've learned working with others as far as music goes? What I've learned working with others. In what aspect? So it could be in multiple, I would say, recording 
Like maybe, you know, you've been recording with another artist and you learn, maybe they didn't teach you, but you picked up on by watching them like different, uh, maybe taking your breaths in between takes, like, you know, just by, instead of just working with yourself. I don't know. I don't know. I felt, I don't really know how to deeper in it. So like, I think I get what you're saying. Yeah. Like just what have you learned from other musicians or would that could be producers, rappers, engineers? So, I mean, as far as, like, making music-wise, I record with very few people. So, I mean, um, lots of the people that I do record with, I would say that they all have something that, like, I definitely do look at and be like, I should try more of this. I should definitely try more of this because, like, this sounds cool. And um, I just want to see, like, how I could employ it in, like, my own way, you know? Um, I feel like everyone kind of does that. I feel like everyone just kind of does that in general as far as just, like, when they first start or just not even first start or just listen to music in general, everyone's just like, oh, that sounds pretty cool. I want to see, like, how I can put that on in my own way and make that my own, like... I own sound to the point where it's like it becomes something entirely different, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I definitely learned things in that way. Um, I also learned that working with people can also be a headache. Working with people can 100% be a headache. People yeah. are people. So always keep that in mind. Oh. Yeah. Working with people could be good or bad. And that's. I feel like that's why a lot in music you'll see like randomly Drake and 21 started making music together. Then they dropped a whole collab album. Once you find somebody that you can click with, then it's going to work out better. But if you always switching up, it, it feels like you're trying to force it and shit. Right. Yeah. You know, we got to get, man, we got to get the the gang together, bro. Because like you said, bro, like you ain't, you ain't done a song with nobody as long as you've been in the collective and we always scheduling this shit just happened what yesterday yes. we're supposed to go to the studio bro and like you weren't here but they was talking in the group chat like oh yeah we're we gonna go to ben's crib and that that got switched off and then oh we're gonna we're gonna go to the studio and then motherfuckers stop responding <laughs> no like damn bro, bro like, i don't know what i don't know what niggas is doing bro i be trying to tell them stop playing bro like we i feel like as a as a as a collective, we can a hundred percent just do more of the basic. We do a lot of other shit, a lot of bigger shit, a lot of a lot of other shit. That's great, but like we need to come together more and do more of the basic shit, like the shit that it makes a foundation that like you know really gets us in tune with each other and just makes things easier. Yeah, I, feel like I mean, we don't do enough of that. I feel like our uh, our foam pit would be that we're a collective and not a group. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're individuals that are coming together to support each other. So, I feel like we're still getting the ball rolling. But, shit, you see Ben's, Ben's making space in the crib to record. And, I saw that shit. That shit. Um, buddy, buddy made a whole... Get a whole booth in that bit. I saw that bit. That shit. All we gotta do is get get. Uh, That's what uh, we're supposed to be doing tonight. Yeah, shit. That is what we're gonna be doing. Shit. Some of them already over there. We over we're here doing our podcast. Man. But some um, niggas ain't fake it, bro. They be doing that shit. We be going in there, bro. And then like, we they start they start doing other shit, bro. <laughs> trying to. That's what I'm saying tonight, like, we got we got to tap in, bro. Yeah, just, well, just, tonight is, I think it's going to be great because it's all about fun. Like, it's Benny's birthday, you know, we celebrating. It's not like, oh, we, we need to go crank out music. Like, no, nah, I feel like this shit going to be more natural. We got there, they got the tequila over there. Them boys better be slowing down on that motherfucker too, bro. Don't be killing the tequila now. Bro, them niggas is turned as fuck. You know for a fact that boy Ben's about to go crazy. <laughs> and he home, he ain't got to go nowhere. Right, nigga is chilling right now. Nigga about to get turned, bro. No, nah, for sure, for sure. Um, so let's get into some uh like more unique questions. I kind of like when I ask a question and you got to like ask me for more like depth to understand what I'm asking. I like that. I feel like that's a good question, you know what I'm saying? Type shit. It could be good and bad, but I don't know. Like I said, bro, I told you I'm using ChatGPT to try to 
help influence my, and I don't copy and paste, you know what I'm saying? I just take influence and come up with questions there. But this one is going to be, this ain't from chat GPT. This is straight from me. I, I thought this was, uh, I was listening to, uh, the 21 Savage and he had, uh, Morgan Freeman narrating the whole album. If you could have anybody narrate your album and this could be just an actor, like, uh, it could be an, uh, anime voice actor, whatever. If you could have somebody narrate, an album for you, who would it be? Someone narrate an album that um, no budget, like don't even think about like oh I couldn't access this like now nah, you you Drake you could get anybody you want. <laughs> That's a great question, bro. I have no fucking clue. Who the fuck would narrate my album, bro? I would, um. <laughs> You already got the uh like you said, the prop, you know what I'm saying? You got you got stuff already affiliated affiliated with your name. So like to me and your music videos like be telling stories. I don't know. I feel like there's no other person to really narrate it other than just like me, to be real. Like I was I mean Yeah, no, nah, I've always just thought there's no one else other than narrated than me. It's my story. I feel like I should tell it. Hey shit, I love that. I love that. All right, so what about this? What's a uh what's like a dream collab with another rapper or just musicianship, maybe not even rapper? A dream collab. Um So that one actually, yeah, no. Nah, nah, I would say um a dream collab 100% for me would be um definitely definitely Rob Banks. It would definitely be Rob Banks. Rob Banks, hundred percent. My sis fuck with Rob Banks heavy. She call him his ba- her baby daddy. <laughs> <laughs> she done been to like six, seven, on um, a bunch of shows and uh, met him a bunch of times and shit. And no, uh, Rob Banks has been my favorite rapper since Year of the Savage, since I heard Yachts, and um, I listened to a lot of the other shit before that too, like Calendars and shit. Um, that was like a heavy influence on like. What I do and how I rap today, I ain't gonna lie. Um, and like, I remember I went to a show, I end up um, doing the little meet greet shit. I met him, I talked to him, and I told him, Next time you see me, I'm gonna be on the stage with you. Like, I'm not gonna be in the crowd. And a couple years later, next time, that was one of the big first big artist I actually ever opened for I was Rob Banks in Jacksonville and in Orlando and I told him that and then I met him again the second time at the at the show and I told him and reminded him and like it was and he remembered funnily enough I didn't think he was gonna remember but he did but that was like uh that was a crazy moment for me because like at the time I was like hey rapper I told his that like next time you see me I'm gonna be up there and it happened Type shit. That's that stacking that undeniable proof shit I was talking about. Yeah, that's that manifestation, boy. You said you was gonna do that shit. You put it out in the universe. How did you uh get on to those uh that opening? Um, so shout out to Nick. All right, I had um it was a nigga who put me on to a lot of shows, actually. Shout out, shout out to Nick, man, Star Life Nick. Look him up, look him up, man. Tap in with him. Um, he definitely helped me out. And shout out to High Tolerance as well. High Tolerance uh, put me on to a lot of shit. Shout out Bobby, bro. Shout out, shout out Bobby. Uh, even when even when shit got fucked up, shit got corrected. So you feel me? So I will say shout out, shout out them boys. Yes, sir. And as a uh, High Tolerance, that's uh, pretty much. All of your like out of city shows, not all of them, but a good majority of them. Yeah, like the uh, the tours type shit where you were opening for people on their tours. Yeah, uh, yeah. not all of them, but majority of because some of them was Nick too. Some of the ones that like the bigger ones, like some of the Rob Banks, like Orlando, and, like all that shit was Nick. So, and Thousand Band Fani was Nick. So, uh, yeah. Is there anybody you would want to go on tour with? Anyone that I want to go on tour with? Yeah. Do you feel like somebody uh, maybe like that matches your performance energy? 
Bro, I would want to go on tour with a um, couple people. Actually, that would be fucking crazy. Um, if just just because like I know the energy be lit and it'd be they be doing some international shit, bro, and that shit would be hard, bro. I go on tour with like Jaleel, bro, because his shits be turned. I ain't gonna lie. I don't really like. I don't even like fuck with bro music. I really don't. I ain't gonna yeah. lie to you. He do. He is hard. Don't don't get me wrong. He is hard. I just personally don't listen to that shit. But cut is hard. But his shows be unnecessarily turned yeah, off bro. that backflip, bro. And that's in fucking insane, bro. Cause I try to do a backflip at a show too, bro. I'm not as raw as Jaleel with the backflip, bro. <laughs> I still got them boys turned, but like, bro, that shit is crazy, bro. And then like. Another nigga too I want to see, bro, is like I would want to go on tour with NASCAR Allo, bro, because like that is like them niggas be suicidal, bro. <laughs> I don't even I don't know how to explain that shit. Like they are suicidal, but them niggas like, but them niggas be straight like punching niggas in the face and like like crazy like crazy shit like shit that's like niggas literally just go insane. I just want to like see how niggas make niggas do that. Like that is wild yeah. to me. Like for you to like. Make niggas do crazy shit like the level of shit I've seen them niggas do, like at them show. I never been there, but I've like watched them do on on like the internet and shit, bro. And it's like, how the fuck do you make people like not have any shame? Like, how how do you do that? Is it? I was like, I don't. I just I wanted to, cause like that's crazy to me. Like these niggas punching niggas, hitting niggas in the, over the head with like glass like glass bottles and shit, bro. Like straight like. Body slamming niggas, bro. Like niggas out there in their underwear and shit. Like, how do you make niggas have no shame, bro? Like these niggas definitely off drugs, but like, it's more than that, bro. Cause yeah. there's no fucking way. Like, yeah, and yeah, they got that cult following, right? Like that yeah. should be crazy, bro. Like I just want to see like a nigga orchestrate that. Yeah, like, cause that's like crazy shit. That's crazy. Yeah, so, what do you feel like Jacksonville needs to improve on, or what do we need? To become better in the, not even just music, bro, but just in the arts category in general, bro. I feel like we've improved. You're 22, I'm 31. So from where we were when I was your age, we've made some steps. But I will say, like, there's some things that need to be worked on. So what do you think Jacksonville needs to do to improve their art scene? With Jacks, like, just, like, all arts? I mean, let's stick with music because that's yours. So, like, in the, in the music scene in Jacksonville, what do you think we need to improve on? Just as a culture. Um. So, if so, all right, what we should definitely 100% work on, bro, is just having niggas just be more open. In my personal opinion, as, like, a, a, a musician, like, doing doing music, like, as, as your art, I would a hundred percent like, like you could you could worry about jacks, but like you want to, like I said, one of the biggest things that you want to do is travel and network and like build connections everywhere else. And when you come back to Jacks, Jacks always gonna be here, bro. As a Jacksonville nigga, you will always know that like you might move out this bit, but Jacksonville somehow has a has a way to bring niggas back to Jacksonville. I don't know how to explain that shit, but I talked yeah. to many people from Jacksonville, and this is like a true thing. Many niggas like who are born in Jacksonville, have always left here, and then for some random reason came back. You one of them. <laughs> oh, bro, for some random reason ended up coming back. Um, and, like, when you come back, if you, if you, would, if you do it right, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be better. Because Jacksonville is one of those places where, like, the niggas is not going to really fuck with you until, like, you on or you're, like, a certain, like, the demographic, I could say. I guess that's how you would say it. Um, because, like, these niggas here are really close-minded, bro. That's because, like, Jacksonville... I don't explain... Jacksonville is just Jacksonville, bro. Niggas know that, like... Like, Jacksonville is not the most open-minded place. <laughs> it's no. just it's just not. Like... Jacksonville is, like, not the country, but it's country, bro. Like... <laughs> yeah. It's because we so big. Like, because there's country parts of Jacksonville. There's the suburbs... Then you got downtown, like, and then Riverside, like, everywhere has their own vibe. The beach, 
You already know the beach way different than that in Jacksonville. In town. And my, personally, me Jacksonville be lacking like culture. Jacksonville just has Jacksonville culture. It doesn't have like a diverse culture. Like, I feel like all the people here are like. I completely disagree with you. There's and bro, listen. There's prominent Indians here, Bosnians, which we went over, Filipinos. We have the largest Filipino culture in America. Our uh population most of them are here hella white people hella black people we very diverse I, as a city, I, when bro. i when i say this i don't mean as in like we don't have those things but i feel like all these things are like they're not represented they're not they're I just, got you. they like they're just like everyone is in jacksonville and they're like they understand that they like but i don't even know how to explain i'm trying to like find out how to like word this shit but it's like you can uh, easily tell when niggas from Jacksonville, no matter what race they are. You tell, you can tell a Jacksonville nigga, bro. Like, like you just can, bro. Like, they, they, Jacksonville niggas just carry themselves a certain way, like, and just in general, and like lots of them, even other races, they have like their stereotypical Jacksonville variant, <laughs> like. Like, the Indians in Jacksonville are, like, Jacksonville Indians, and you can tell. Like, the white people of Jacksonville are white Jacksonville people. Like, and you can tell what part of Jacksonville they're from, too. Like, <laughs> you can easily tell. Westside, Middleburg. Right. <laughs> McClenny, Palatka, Yuli. Yuli. <laughs> Ponte Vedra. Green Cove, Fleming Island. St. John's County. He's right. You know. <laughs> hey, you ain't capping, bro. This is what I'm saying. Like, you know, like, a Jacksonville nigga, bro. Like, it's not. Jacksonville is Jacksonville, and like <laughs> we 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 almost like a country as New York, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, I feel that though, cause like you got like uh, in like Miami, you got like hella like Spanish areas, you got the Cuban area, right? You got the Mexican area. A lot of these areas like, be like drastically different, like they're drastically like uh, like drastically different. These people act different ways, like like entirely different ways, and then you can tell just from like. The way they're thinking and the mindset of how they operate, bro. You can tell, like, lots of niggas in Jacksonville just have that, like, that either sheltered or, like, crash dummy mindset out here. Like, that's just, yeah. like, that's lots. That's just lots of people out here in Jacksonville. Like, you're either, like, ridiculously, like, sheltered or, like, you're, like, uh, you, you're uh, essentially, like, a crash dummy. Or you're not from here. And you just happen to be living here because you're, like, probably, like, one of the military bases. So, no. Or happen to move here for like some logistics job. <laughs> That's what lots of niggas move here for. Nah, bro. The more we're we're growing as a city, bro. So many people are moving here to work, bro. Because we got so much more shit. I'm telling you, lots up. of random people just come here to work. We got like four Amazon warehouses, bro. Four, bro. Like not just one, bro. We got four of them bitches here, bro. I bet they'll open a couple more too before a uh, few years pass by. We got multiple Whole Foods. Multiple Trader Joe's, like Walmart, Sam's Club is popping up, bro. They building up that Nocatee area. Listen, bro. There's a Walmart, like every two miles. Nah, we'll say four. Every four miles, it's a Walmart in Jacksonville, bro. South side, north side. <laughs> them bitches is everywhere, bro. If it's not a Walmart, it's a neighborhood Walmart. Them bitches kind of clutch because I hate like a Walmart be so big and one side the groceries and like the medicine and shit on the other side. So you got to walk the whole store, but no, in the neighborhood Walmart, that shit compressed. I, I also be, be feeling like in them big Walmarts, I feel like one side always just be lacking more than the other. Like on, like if like all this stuff on like the home decor, like department side, like you want some shit in there and like all of a sudden everything is gone over there, but everything is like filled up on the grocery side or like everything. Yeah. There's nothing on the grocery side and there's just like everything on the home and decor side. Like it's like, I don't understand that. You ever been to the uh, Walmart in Durban? And uh yes, hey, that bit far. Yeah, <laughs> that bit far. I fought with them boys. They had the new carts before anybody had the new right. carts. They got the duh, they got the cup holder in the cart. <laughs> yes, <laughs> bro. T- the wheels is smooth. You don't have the, the little cookie. T- yes, t- bro. T- little, t- little spinny, <laughs> bro. Yes. Hey, I fought with Walmart though, bro. Because I'm a, I'm a budget I'm a budget guy, and Shout a lot Walmart. of the same shit at Publix is at Walmart. So if I, I only go to Publix for fresh like. Meat and like seafood. That's the only. That's generally the only. Or like certain, just anything certainly fresh. I want. From yeah. Public. Cause generally like water, produce. Yeah. 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 I like to. Uh, I'll get some produce. And some seasonings Publix. I'll get from. I'll get from Publix instead of, um, Walmart. 
Yeah, they saw stuff on some shit, but it's it's kind of just a regular store. I prefer me. I like like Whole Foods, Sprouts. Like I like to go places where there's a lot of like healthy and natural options, so you could still get like some junk food, but it's on the more healthy side and it don't got all the like GMOs and bullshit in it. Cause like we was talking earlier with like the seafood, like you know what I'm saying. You try to get fresh seafood, and you can't just like eat that shit anywhere. Like I never, I bought a steak from Aldi's one time. Why we do that? I don't know if that's like a Florida thing. Throw an S, like Duns, like motherfuckers, just because it's not called Aldi's. It's just Aldi. Like I don't I know. I think it's a country thing. It's a certain like saying country. Y'all. Okay, yeah, like motherfuckers just throw an S on the end of yeah. anything, bro. I be fucking with the mountain valleys. Tight shit. <laughs> <laughs> but shit, yeah, man. Did you did you have anything you wanted to uh, put out there, or any anything you want to talk about before we go? Uh, I just want to tell niggas out there, man, that. Tell them in the mic. Uh, facts. Yeah, facts, get this right. Facts, facts. Tell them in the mic. Um, really, I just want to tell niggas out there that you could do it, bro. Just believe in yourself and go ahead and do it, bro. Uh, I feel like lots of niggas um, hold themselves back because they think of what about this? What if this? What if that? Maybe this? Who cares, bro? Just do it, and eventually something's going to happen, bro. That's just how shit works, I promise you. As long as you keep at it, just keep at it. Yes, sir. All right, man. Thank y'all for tuning in. Remember to follow us, like us, subscribe, and comment on everything, man. Y'all drop it in, get that engagement up. We're trying to get Jacksonville on, get a more in-depth view of the creatives we have here in the city. Like he said, culture is not too much represented throughout the city. There might be areas, but we're trying to show y'all this entire city got people from all the different nooks and crannies all around the city. Y'all make sure y'all follow like and comment on Tale of Ronin. I ain't even gonna try to spell it. Y'all see it right there. Y'all see yeah. it in the description. And shit, we out, man. Yes, Duval sir. County, baby. <laughs> <laughs>